belief in the last day, resurrection, and judgment day. To mark the world's end, God the Almighty will order angel Israfil to blow a trumpet to announce the arrival of this faithful day. At the blast of a trumpet, a blast will be heard so horrendous and terrifying that the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth will fall unconscious, except those whom Allah wills. The mountains will be lifted, crushed, and crumbled into pieces likening wool. The sky above will split open and crack piece by piece. The oceans will boil over as they burn in flames. The planets, the moon, the stars will fall from their orbits, losing their shine. Darkness will commence everywhere. The earth will shake in a terrifying quake, flattening and leveling with no peaks or troughs. Every living thing will cease to exist. Then, when the horn is blown with one blast, and the earth and the mountains are lifted and leveled with one blow, then on that day the resurrection will occur. Quran 69, 13-15 Then Allah will command His angel to blow the trumpet for a second time, and a violent earthquake will erupt, causing the graves to split open and all of the creation from the beginning of time will be resurrected. And the trumpet will be blown, i.e. the second blowing. And behold, from the graves they will come out quickly to their Lord. Quran 36, 51 Then God will replace the earth and heavens with another creation. Every deceased person will rise up from their grave, reclaiming their original physical body. Bones and body parts will be reassembled in their original form. Just as God created the everything the first time, He will do so again. The day when we will fold the heaven like the folding of a sheet of paper. As we began the first creation, we will repeat it, that is, a promise binding upon us. Indeed, we will do it. Quran 21104 People will rush from their graves so quickly in chaos, terrified and confused. A child's hair will turn gray and their face will wrinkle from fear. A nursing mother will forget her child and pregnant women will miscarry. People will run about in chaos as if in a drunken state, but they are not drunk, but the punishment of Allah is severe. They will say, O oh, woe to us, who has raised us up from our sleeping place? The reply will be, this is what the Most Merciful had promised, and the messengers spoke truth. Quran 36.52 On this day a man will flee from his brother, mother, father, spouse, and children nearest and dearest to him, even as they beg for help. Man will think only of himself, terrified as his soul peers into the eyes of infinity. God will gather all mankind, naked, barefooted, and uncircumcised, including both the believers and non-believers, all jinn, spirits made from smokeless fire, and all animals, all of whom will be brought to a plain known as the place of gathering. No one will speak, and heads will be lowered in humility as they hear only footsteps. And they will be presented before your Lord in rows, and He will say, You have certainly come to us just as we created you the first time, but you claimed that we would never make for you an appointment. Quran 1848 Everyone will be stripped of the titles and roles which they held in their worldly lives. The kings, the presidents, the millionaires, the poor, the slaves, all will be lined before their Lord regardless of the ranks and classes they possessed throughout the course of their worldly lives. The area will be so overcrowded with humans, jinn, and animals all pressing each other that every individual will be crowded into the space covered by their own two feet. People will stand nervously waiting for judgment, and mankind will perspire in agony. Anxiety levels will run so high that not a single person will sit down on that frightening day. As humankind awaits the decree of the Almighty, the sun will descend so low above their heads, it will linger a mile away, and each person will sweat according to the level and intensity of their good and bad deeds. Some will sink to their ankles in their own perspirations, while others would sink to their thighs and waist, and still others would drown in their own sweat flowing up to their mouths. The only souls that will be shaded will be seven categories of righteous people who will be granted shade during this traumatic day 
in which there will be no other shade but the shade of Allah's magnificent throne. On this day, Allah the Exalted will gift Prophet Muhammad a pond called the Pond of Qathar, one located in the courtyard of the place of gathering, where the water is whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. He will drink from the pond and invite the believers and the righteous of his nation, those who died in the way of Allah and his messenger, to drink from the same pool. A personal invitation will be required to drink, and Prophet Muhammad will recognize the righteous of his nation by their foreheads, hands, and limbs rendered bright and shiny from the efforts of their wudu, ablution that is performed before prayer to remove impurities of the body. Those who reach this pool will drink from it and quench their thirst permanently. Indeed, the righteous will be among shades and springs. Quran 7741 Judgment Day will equal 50,000 years in duration of our time, but for the believers, it would only feel like the time elapsed between the Acer to the Maghrib prayer, which is roughly a couple of hours. For the unbelievers and wrongdoers, conditions on this day will be intense and unbearable. This because of the terror, the heat, the standing, and the thirst prevalent during this period. All of mankind, including Muslims, Christians, and Jews from all nations would unite, and some would exclaim, let us ask somebody to intercede for us, and ask our Lord to begin the accountability. Then all of mankind will rush to Prophet Adam and ask, O Prophet Adam, you are the father of all mankind who Allah created with his own hands. Please intercede for us. Prophet Adam then will respond, Myself, myself, I am not fit for this. I fear the same thing you fear as I disobeyed my Lord once. And today, my Lord is in the state of anger which he has never been before. Please go to Prophet Noah. Then mankind will go to Prophet Noah, who will respond the same to the effect, Myself, myself, I cannot do this. Go to Prophet Abraham. Then mankind will go to Prophet Abraham, then to Prophet Musa, then to Prophet Jesus. Prophet Jesus then will respond, I am not fit for this, as people took me for a god, and I have to answer to that. Finally, all of mankind will reach Prophet Muhammad, who will respond, This is what Allah has favored me for, and the only intercession I'll be able to give is on behalf of my nation who followed me. As for the nations before me, they will need to go after their prophets. And as for the disbelievers and for the ones that worshipped other than Allah, they will need to follow those who they followed and worshipped in their worldly life. Prophet Muhammad will then prostate to his Lord and will praise his Lord with words inspired within him by God. God the Almighty then will say, O Muhammad, lift your head and ask for anything and I will give you. Prophet Muhammad then will respond, O my Lord, save my nation, save my nation. Then the judgment will begin. God will call upon each individual to stand before him to judge and question him or her according to his or her faith and how they lived their life with no translator or interpreter needed. The conversation will involve only you and your master. Who will judge you and your deeds? Each individual will be held accountable for every action they took, said and intended, and all of which were recorded in accurate records by each person's assigned angels. The first thing that will be questioned is whether each person performed their mandatory prayers. Each individual will be asked terrifying questions about how he or she lived their life, utilized their youth, earned and spent their wealth, and what one did with the knowledge they acquired. One will be reminded and informed of the good and bad deeds they have done. On that day, one would either meet the mercy of God or the justice of God. As the disbelievers will try to argue and lie their way out of their deserved punishment, God will seal their mouths, hands, feet, ears, skin, and body parts, with these body parts testifying against them as surprise witnesses of their life actions. Their body parts will complain to God, their master, on how that person made them sin. That day we will seal over their mouths, and their hands will speak to us, and their feet will testify about what they used to earn. Quran 3665. 
The disbelievers will ask their own body parts why they bore witness against them, to which they then will reply, God, who gave speech to all things, has made us speak. Everyone shall be dealt with according to their deeds and actions. No injustice or transgression will occur on this day, not even for the disbeliever or the evilest of people. When the reckoning is completed, books of records and deeds will fly to each person. Everyone will be given his or her book that will contain records of all the deeds he or she performed in their life, and the record of their deeds shall be placed before them, and you will see the guilty full of fear for what it contains, and will say, Woe to us! What a record this is! It leaves nothing, big or small, but encompasses it. They will find their deeds confronting them. Your Lord wrongs no one. Quran, 1849 the believer will be given his book in his right hand as a sign of honor. The one who will receive his record in his right hand will undergo an untroubled audit. His sins will be overlooked, and he will turn to his people, rejoiced. As for him who is given his book in his right hand, he will say, Here, take and read my book. Indeed, I was sure that I would have to face my reckoning one day. So he will have a pleasant life in an elevated garden whose clusters of fruits will be within easy reach. He will be told, Eat and drink pleasantly for what you did before in the days gone by. Quran 69, 19-24 As for the disbeliever, the wrongdoer, he or she will receive their book in their left hand or from behind their back, receiving the worst kind of auditing with full regret wishing he or she were dead as they anticipate their descent into the hellfire. But as for he who is given his record in his left hand, he will say, Oh, I wish I had not been given my record and had not known what is my account. I wish the death that I suffered in the world was the final death. My wealth has not availed me. My power has perished from me. It will be ordered. Seize him and shackle him. Then into hellfire, drive him. Then into a chain whose length is seventy cubits, insert him. Indeed, he did not use to believe in God, the Most High, nor did he encourage the feeding of the poor. So there is not for him here this day any devoted friend, nor any food, except from the discharge of wounds. None will eat it except the sinners. Quran 69, 19-37 then the scales intended for weighing people's deeds will be presented for view, a balancing scale which is real and accurate in its results. No act, even of an atom's weight of importance, will be overlooked. Whether it took the form of cursing, backbiting, stealing, or something that was done or said for the good of helping someone. And we place the scales of justice for the day of resurrection so no soul will be treated unjustly at all. And if there is even the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it forth, and sufficient are we as accountant. Quran 2147 A person's good deed will be placed in one pan, and his evil deeds in the other. If his good deeds outweigh the evil, then with God's mercy, success, and salvation will be rewarded for that individual. If one's evil deeds outweigh his good deeds, then he or she would be condemned to the hellfire for severe punishment. And the weighing of deeds that day will be the truth. So those whose scales are heavy, it is they who will be the successful. And those whose scales are light, they are the ones who will lose themselves for what injustice they were doing towards our verses. Quran 7, 8, 9 Then Allah will destroy all lights and pure darkness will fall everywhere. So dark that if one placed his hands in front of his face, he could not see it. Paradise will lie on one side, and in order to reach it, one would have to cross a very narrow bridge. A bridge so narrow it would stand thinner than a hair and sharper than a knife. Under the bridge will burn hellfire. People will need to pass this bridge with the aid of his or her light, which would shine from their bodies in accordance with their belief and the righteousness they presented in their lives. And there is none of you except he will pass over it. This is upon your Lord, an inevitability decreed. Quran 1971 Some people will reflect very strong bright lights emanating from their bodies and will pass the bridge in a blink of an eye. 
Every act of worship accepted by God will be transformed into light on that day. Our prophet stated, Convey glad tidings to those who walk to the mosque in the darkness, for they will be given full light on the day of resurrection. Others will emanate only enough light to see one step ahead. Some will crawl and some will fall into the hellfire. This slippery bridge has thorns and hooks that will snare people, and the soul will struggle and fight against the fall. The ones that do not deserve to pass the bridge will fall, and those who successfully cross the bridge will approach paradise. The prophets will wait on the other side, praying to God to save their nations. Amongst the people will stand the hypocrites, who will ask the believers to share their light so they can pass over the bridge, and they will be told in response, Get your own light. On the same day the hypocrite men and hypocrite women will say to those who believe, Wait for us that we may acquire some of your light. It will be said, Go back behind you and seek light, and a wall will be placed between them with a door, its interior containing mercy, but on the outside of it is torment. Quran 57.13 The final stage before the admission to paradise is what's known as the Gantara, where one would have to make amends with people they harmed or wronged in their life, those to whom they never made amends or of whom they never asked for forgiveness. If a person were wronged and did not receive justice from his abuser, he finally would see justice by benefiting from some of that person's good deeds, which would adjust the level of paradise they enter. On the day of judgment, 70,000 angels will conjure the hellfire and every single person will ponder and reflect on the quality of his or her life. But of what purpose will this remembrance and recounting serve at that point? Those who fell into worship of false deities, those who denied the belief of God, and those who lived a wicked and evil life of sin will be condemned eternally to the hellfire. They will be led into the hellfire by the idols and false gods they followed and worshiped to receive their everlasting torture, punishment, pain, and disgrace. The hellfire is a place of an unimaginable and immense suffering, extreme blazing temperatures, and unquenchable thirst. A residence prepared for the disbelievers. They will feel remorse and terror as they beg for safety and forgiveness, but it will be too late. Indeed, we have warned you of a near punishment on the day when a man will observe what his hands have put forth, and the disbeliever will say, Oh, I wish that I were dust. Quran 7840. As for the sinful believers, they will be placed into the hellfire in accordance with their sins, but only to be cleansed from all their sins and eventually sent to paradise. As for the ones that believed and worshipped God alone and lived a righteous life, they will be rewarded generously and warmly welcomed to God's paradise, where they will live eternally in a garden of physical pleasures and spiritual delights where every wish shall be granted. And give good tidings to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that they will have gardens in paradise, beneath which rivers flow. Whenever they are provided with a provision of fruit therefrom, they will say, This is what we were provided with before, and it is given to them in likeness, and they will have therein purified spouses, and they will abide therein eternally. Quran 2.25 the people of paradise will live in beautiful mansions where rivers will flow beneath them. They will know no disease, sickness, hardship, pain, sorrow, or animosity, as God will remove all ill feelings from people's hearts. A place of riches, servants, streams of wine that does not intoxicate, milk that never changes in flavor, honey of utmost purity pleasant in color, taste, and smell, water which does not brackish, pleasant fragrances, and pure, gorgeous partners. Never will a person of paradise ever feel tiredness, exhaustion, boredom, nor will they ever have to taste death again. The believers will be rewarded with the greatest bliss of all, which will be the honor of looking upon the holy and beautiful face of God, the glorious. The unbelievers will be deprived of this vision. Say the enjoyment of this world is little, and the hereafter is better for he who fears Allah. Quran 4.77 Faith in the last day, resurrection, 
and Judgment Day are fundamental beliefs that Muslims must hold to complete their faith. Everything the Almighty creates and does has a purpose, including the creation of each of our lives. God states in the Quran, Did you think that we created you for no reason and that to us you would not be returned? Quran 23, 115 God proves life after death as stated in the Holy Quran, amongst its proofs, is a moral and ethical argument. Certain evil people in this world have gotten away with horrific crimes, and good people have lived difficult lives. If a person was wronged and did not see true justice in his or her life, God will give his justice on that day. Without Judgment Day, unconvicted mass murderers would never be punished, and life would be unfair. Everyone shall be judged, and justice shall be served. God states in his book, Do the evildoers think that we will make them like those who believed and done righteous deeds in their life and in their death? Bad indeed is their judgment. Quran 45.21 If God created mankind the first time, why couldn't he create mankind a second time? To recreate mankind a second time will be even easier. Mankind has already witnessed the Almighty's first creation, in which people were created out of soil. And He makes comparisons for us, and forgets His own origin and creation. He says, Who can give life to decomposed rotten bones? Say He will give them life, who produced them the first time. And He is of every creation all-knower. Quran 36.78-79 the creation of the heavens and earth is greater than the creation of mankind. He who can create such a vast and complex world can certainly raise the dead. Amongst all his signs of life, after death is the continuous resurrection of plants and vegetation. Every year, we observe the phenomenon of dead land with no vegetation, with the land being dead in the winter, only to return to life in the spring. And he is the one who sends the winds as glad tidings before his mercy, until, when they have carried clouds, heavy, we drive them to a dead land, then we send down from it the water, then we bring forth from it all kinds of the fruits. Thus we will bring forth the dead, so that you may bear this in mind. Quran 7.57 God asks man to ponder over the situation of seeds placed on the ground, when water and earth surround the seeds, they logically should decompose, as opposed to opening and splitting into a root that grows out of the ground, producing magnificent life forms like trees and plants. There are all signs of Allah's power, infinite wisdom, and the capabilities of bringing about life after death. The Holy Quran has over 40 names of Judgment Day. Among its names is the Day of Standing, since everyone will be too nervous to sit the day of accounting, the day of sorting out, the day of eternity, the day of meeting, and the hour. Judgment Day will be such a heavy, difficult day that every page of the Quran mentions Judgment Day, either directly or indirectly. The Quran contains many vivid descriptions of Judgment Day. It's a true blessing that one can acquire knowledge about Judgment Day and its severity now, so he or she can prepare themselves adequately for this great day. The possession of faith in life after death encourages one to do righteous deeds, to fear God, to increase his God consciousness, and to avoid wrongdoing. O oh, you who have believed, protect yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stones. Quran 66 6. Do not stand amongst people that have convinced themselves that Judgment Day is far away and that they don't have to prepare themselves for this faithful occurrence. O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah, and let every soul look to what it has put forth for tomorrow, and fear Allah, indeed. Allah is acquainted with what you do. Quran 59.18